Hi there, it's Tim, Golf 5 Tango Mike again. Thanks for joining. And if you've just stumbled across the channel, then think about clicking that subscribe button and the notification bell for any future videos. So today we're going to compare a horizontal 25 foot doublet, an inverted V1 in fact, with a vertical version of this doublet. Now I've done uh, a, a look at the vertical version before, I've done some modeling with it on MMA and A. I'll put a link up there if you want to see that particular video. Now, let's have a look at what these two aerials look like and then we'll see how we're going to compare how effective they are. So let's have a look. So the 25 foot horizontal doublet you can see there, the apex is at nine and a half meters. One leg is 8.3 8 meters above ground level, the other one goes down to seven and a half. That's because effectively there's slightly more room on one side of the aerial than the other. And then the other side, you've got the 25 foot vertical doublet, the one we looked at before. Uh, ignore what I've said about the 300 home ladder line there in blue, just ignore that. We don't need to worry about that for now. But this antenna is the same as that horizontal doublet in terms of length. It's just fed in the center uh, as a straight vertical on a fiberglass pole. And you can see that the top of that antenna is 10 meters above ground level and the bottom of the antenna is 2.4 meters above ground level. Okay then, so how am I going then to judge uh, how good one antenna is against the other in terms of gain? So how I'm going to compare the horizontal with the vertical, and by the way, I'm doing this in terms of DX. So I'm looking at 5 degrees, 10 degrees and 15 degrees off the horizon. These are typically the angles we want to do well in if we're going to make that sort of single hop uh, DX contact, okay? So, how am I going to uh, judge how the horizontal compares to the vertical and vice versa? I'm going to look at it in two ways. First of all, we're going to look at, well, what sort of gain does the vertical give us at these low angles? What sort of gain does the horizontal give us, the maximum gain? Then I'm going to look as well at, out of the 360 degree coverage around the aerial, each aerial, how much, of that, how much of that 360 degrees does the horizontal beat the vertical? Now we know the vertical will have the same gain around the aerial, 360 degrees. It'll be the same gain. Not so with a horizontal or inverted V doublet. Okay, so we're going to see whether or not the doublet can beat the vertical uh, at those low angles of radiation and how much of that aerial and in what direction are we actually getting that improved gain, if we have any, over the vertical? So the first thing I'm going to look at is five degree takeoff. Now, five degrees is a very low angle of takeoff. If you get good gain here, you're going to hopefully hit some very good single hop DX. All right, so let's take a look at the table together. So the way I've done it is this. Looking at MMA and A, I've compared five bands, 20, 17, 15, 12 and 10 on the left. And this table is just looking at five degrees off the horizon. I'm looking at the vertical gain, that's the gain off the vertical antenna, and then the gain you get off the horizontal antenna. I've looked at both the best and the worst, because don't forget with a horizontal, or in this case an inverted V doublet or dipole, when you have, say, the, um, the wire going across like this, you're going to get your best gain coming off broadside, okay? And you're going to get very much lower gain off the ends of the antenna, all right? That's why I'm looking at how much of the 360 degrees around this antenna, the horizontal could beat the vertical in these different takeoff angles for these different bands, okay? One other thing to look at before we go back to the table, the 20 meter uh, horizontal, of course, is below a half wavelength off the ground, which is critical. And if again, if you want to find out how important that is, I have done a recent video, I'll put a link up there, comparing dipoles of different heights. All right. So that's one critical thing. At 17, and definitely at 15, 12 and 10, this antenna is basically above a half wavelength over the ground, which tends to give us better performance at lower takeoff angles. And that's the horizontal what I'm talking about now, the inverted V. Okay, let's go back to the table then. So, 20 meters at five degrees off the horizon, the vertical wins. We've got minus 4.9 dB, horizontal, the best uh, um, gain we get, broadside off the, off the dipole is minus six, we have minus 15 off the ends. The horizontal, as you can see in the last column, does not beat the vertical at all at any point around that aerial, not at 360 degrees, vertical wins. Let's look at 17 meters. The vertical is at minus 3.6 dB gain. Now the horizontal for 100, look at the far column, for 100 for 360 degrees, has in fact 
better gain than the vertical, all right? Uh, only by a DB, look, minus 2.5 at this best. And of course, again, if you look at minus 16.8, that's a very big loss of gain right at the end, a big null, really. But the vertical still is better than the horizontal by, you know, around three quarters of the way around that antenna, okay? 15 degrees, the vertical minus 2.8. The horizontal, well, minus 0 0.7. So at its best, it's now a couple of dB better than the vertical. Again, we have a deep null, though, if we look at that. But it's better by a little bit more, about 128 degrees. And then 12 and 10 metres sort of shrink back a little bit again, uh, down to sort of levels of the 17 metre band. So at 5 degrees off the horizon, all right, um, unless you are aiming this dipole at a particular direction, broadside, okay, and if you get that right, then you can get a better performance in the vertical. If you're aiming, for example, at the United States or you're aiming at South America, then you can put that broadside and therefore you can hopefully get a decent gain out of those directions. If, however, you're stuck at a particular uh, layout because of your garden or whatever, and it isn't really doing that for you, so maybe America, if you're looking for America, that's right off one of the ends of your dike bowl, then you're going to struggle. In fact, you won't be the vertical in that situation. All right? And the way that we can, we can look at that in terms of graphically, pictorially, if you like, if we look at this, um, this is how I compare. So that blue line going across is the dipole. I've shaded in, as you can see, there's a typical pattern there, if you look at that, the azimuth pattern for a dipole, like a figure of eight, isn't it? And now you can see at the, uh, the far ends, we've got yellow uh, shaded in there. And that typically is where the dipole will beat the vertical, all right, if it's high enough. But as you can see around the other parts of it, of going round there where it isn't shaded yellow, that's when the vertical tends to have an advantage over the dipole. Let's carry on now and look at 10 degrees off the horizon then. Now, if we look at the table here at 10 degrees, look, we can see a bit of an improvement for the, for the, uh, for the dipole now, for the horizontal dipole. We can see now that 20 meters, we've got a bit of an improvement. We actually beat the vertical for about a quarter of a way around the antenna, all right? But again, we've got some deep nulls. 17 meters, again, we're almost getting up to, to a sort of parity now with, with, the, with the vertical in terms of how much of, a, how much of a win we get. But we're still just below halfway. But one thing to notice is when the horizontal uh, dipole gets it right, it's now 3 dB better, 2.9 to not minus 0 0.2, just over 3 dB better than the vertical. The green shaded area is 15 meters, and that's where the horizontal actually beats the vertical. Uh, it's 4 dB better off at peak, and for 184 to 360 degrees, which is just over halfway, effectively it, it beats the vertical's 0.5 dB gain. 12 and 10 meters shrink back again, but again, those figures, if you look at it, especially 10 meters look, in fact, especially 12 meters actually in this case, at its best, the horizontal is nearly 4 dB better than the vertical. But of course, at its worst, it's about 10 dB worse. So again, it's about where you shoot that, that RF off your dipole and how you set it up and how you configure it in the direction of it is critical as to where that RF is going to go. Finally, let's look at 15 degrees off the horizon. Now you can see a bit of a change here. Compared up to five degrees, the horizontal dipole does a lot better. Again, 20 meters, because we're not quite half, uh, halfway runs above the ground, it does fall behind the vertical, although at its best, it's two and a half dB better. But 17, 15, 12, and 10, especially 15, seems to be a really good band for this 25 foot uh, dipole. Um, we see a real big difference. We're nearly six dB better at its best compared to the vertical. And on 12 and 10, we see similar sort of results as well. And you notice that 17, 15, 12, and 10 are all shaded in green because that last column tells us that the, ver the horizontal doublet, the, the inverted V, is actually better um, for more than 180 degrees after the 360 than the vertical. So what does this tell us? It tells us really a couple of things. First of all, the vertical gives you, as we know, uh, the same gain around, okay? Um, the dipole is a lot more directional, okay? Um, if you can get, well, there's two things you can do. If you can get your dipole, as I said earlier, your horizontal dipole, I mean, you keep calling it dipole, the horizontal dipole. If you can get your horizontal or inverted V dipole 
to be firing our RF off in the direction you want it to go. So if you really want to work in the US, you really want to work South America, or you want to get into the Far East, then if you can aim it in that direction, then you'll have much better gain than the vertical if you get that dipole high enough off the ground. I is in about a half wavelength or higher, all right? The, the great thing that you could do, if you're able to do this, of course, is to have what we call a rotatable dipole, where you have a dipole, whether it's an inverted V or a flat top, you put it on a rotator, you can literally spin it around 90 degrees. So you could be firing off towards um, west, east-west one minute, rotate it round, and then going towards north-south. That could be a really good option for you, couldn't it? Um, and if I had enough room here, I'd have a go at doing that. Some people do them. They use, um, I think, fiberglass poles. And effectively, they have those permanently out like this. And then they have a rotator and spin the, the dipole around. Um, if you look at the difference in gain, if you go back to look at the 15 degree off the horizon table, if you look down at, say, 15, 12, and 10 meters, if you can get a, a dipole to rotate, to doublet or a dipole, a horizontal one, of course, I'm talking about here, if you can rotate that, then you're looking at some really good gain, you know, 7, 7 dB, uh, which does then kick the vertical into a, into a cocked hat. But of course, the vertical is probably the easier option. It's one, you know, if it's a half wave, for example, you just, you know, or if it's a, a vertical doublet, you just have, you know, two basically wires fed in the center of an end head half wave, you feed it at the end, and you've got that sort of, at some sort of same gain going around the antenna, and you'll be firing off some decent gain off low angles. So, horses for courses, they both have their place. And if you want to find out more about how vertical antennas can really do well for you in terms of DX, click up here for an example. Thanks for watching, 7.3, stay safe, catch you again. Bye bye.